this is Tyler with T-Jack Survival. I have a whole bunch of field review videos of knives, but I don't have a lot of what I would call the tabletop review. So I'm gonna knock out a whole bunch of tabletop reviews to give you the specs and some close-ups of all of the knives that I demo. All right, stay tuned. YouTube guys and girls and peoples this is the gunny hunter made by bark river I have changed up the sheath uh, I basically got it wet put a little saran wrap around the blade shaped it to the to shape that I like put some Obernoffs which is a wax oil mix used a lighter to burn it in and it gives it that really pretty red looking color makes it shaped almost exactly to the shape of the blade it's kind of rigid when you do this, but what you need to do is kind of bend it up a little bit. Once you get a little bit of that bend back, then it's really grippy and it holds on to your blade. Don't ever just thrust your blade into a sheath. What will happen is it will cut it. So make sure that you know what you're doing there. And it gives it a nice solid grip. Okay, it gives it a good grip. This is really rigid up here because it's two layers of leather. Um, okay, this was designed for operators, operationally operating operators, special forces teams and people like that when they're working with indigenous people to have a blade for defense, something that they can cut with quick um, as a protecting type knife that also works really well in the field. This one is an A2 steel and this blade shape is really similar to the Bushcrafter. The handle's very similar but it's got some minute differences. It's more round feeling handle. This is pure convex, not a uh, Scandinavian ground convex like the Bushcrafter is. Um, but they did that so it will cut meat really well, it'll cut through wood very well, and it will stay sharp for a long time. Now normally these are a very high polished steel. I darken this up a little bit with vinegar. Essentially what I'm doing is, uh, it's, it's a little bit of the patina, Let's call that pre-rusting it. Now when you do that, you can take away its cutting ability just a little bit, but you enhance its ability to stay rust free for longer durations of time. So if I'm gonna use this in the bush for a long time, the only oil I really have access to is from the sides of my nose, from combing my hair the direction that the blade doesn't cut into your head, because that's bad, and uh, from meat and whatever type of fats I can get. That's enough to tide it over, but if you're in a really, really wet environment, it can tear the blades up. So I like to pre-rust it a little bit, either with mustard or um, some sort of uh, acidic something, or a high base, or like white vinegar, which is what I did this with. So anyway, that's why it's a little bit darker. Um, this is one of my favorite knives in that it's the right size for my handle. It's the right blade length, it's not too long or too short for me to really handle and do minute tasks. It's got a full tang, it's got a sp spot for a lanyard. I mentioned in my other videos, this knot is called the diamond knot. If you wanna learn how to tie that, go get the app, it's called Grog Knots, and that'll teach you how to do it. All right, so this guy is the Gunny Hunter. Oh, one thing that I, I thought was really interesting that I wanna share with you guys, I asked Mike who runs Bark River, why don't you make these in Kydex? Well, the interesting answer is this, and it's kind of counterintuitive. These are all hand ground. Each one of these has its own unique shape. And because it has its own unique shape, if they made one master mold for Kydex and they spit out a hundred of these Kydex sheets, maybe like 50 of them would fit, 25 of them would scratch the blade, and the other like 25 of them wouldn't fit at all. So that's why you'll always see all these wooden, uh, uh, wooden, wow, leather. That's why you'll see these leather sheaths for these type of blades. That doesn't mean they won't work in Kydex, and I oftentimes will make my own Kydex sheath for them afterwards, 
which I highly suggest for this knife because if you are using this in a military application, a covert application, maybe a counterintelligence or a training of indigenous persons type of application, it's really nice to have it a little bit canted right here, okay, on some sort of kydex. That way I can access it quick and come out cutting and I can keep it underneath the loose kamis and shalwar and all the clothing that you'll see in places like Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever else you find yourself. So anyway, this is the Gunny Hunter made by Bark River. Um, if you have any questions about it, leave your questions and comments down in the questions and comments section. I will leave a link where you can find some of these and please hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching T-Jack Survivor.